Hello, my name is Cesar, and this is the video number 12 in the naming series. Uh, so, it has been a while, but so far, I was looking at this, and we can solve names, we can parse names under different rules, using different tokens, we can uh, manage tokens, add tokens, remove tokens, whatever, we can do the same with rules, and we can serialize stuff to disk. Uh, and if I run this, everything is okay. So it looks like we're in a good position to keep moving forward and maybe try something different. So I would like to, from this point on, focus mainly on a little UI, user interface, to set these uh, rules or tokens uh, without having to do it by code before using the library all the time so it's more you know easy to use basically uh, I don't expect uh, people to do this kind of thing all the time uh, only when you change projects or stuff like that so it's it's not something that's easy to to remember right it's not it's not likely something you're going to use every day so I would like to set that uh, configuration through a little UI to make things easier. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, so I'm going to use Qt or Qt. I say Qt, but you know, it's it's a library. It's a C++ library, and you can use it from Python. So there, well, this naming is a Python library, right? So. There are many bindings, uh, which is the thing that uh, allow you to use the C++ library from Python available. Uh, so let me uh, first create a, a file here called app.py. This is just a temporary thing. I, I don't know if maybe it will change. It's just to put some code somewhere. And, and yeah, and we can start doing some code here. So the thing we could see is that we're in transition uh, time process and we're moving towards Qt5. So Qt5 is the greatest, the latest and greatest. Uh, it's really cool, has a lot of really nice features but uh, uh, at least in the VFX industry we are not quite there yet. Qt4 is still very strong. Uh, so I would like this to support Qt4 and Qt5 uh, any of the most popular bindings, which is PyQt and PySite. Uh, so that's four options. Um, and we are going to use Qt4 features, so that's not the problem. The problem is that there's some uh, slight differences on the imports, uh, mostly. Um, so yeah, so if I were to use uh, PyQt5, I could do something like uh, from a pi qt5 import qt core qt UI and qt widgets so this qt widget is new and they did a little bit of cleanup in qt UI and and split it all the widgets to its own module so now qt UI now it's it's smaller and all the widgets are in this new module. So that's cool. So in PySite, well, would be PySite 2, because that's the the version that works with Qt5. I could do that. Uh, if I want to go back to Qt4, I need to do this, and then I cannot import Qt, uh, Qt widgets, but because it's a subset, I can always do this, right? So it's not correct because the content of this module is different, but this should work. Well, it, it works. It absolutely works. And I can do the same with PySide 2. Yeah, sorry, with PySide. So that should work. So that's, uh, that's good. Uh, so now I, I could put this like in a for loop and and just something like import leaf uh, and, and have everything like tidy uh, but static analysis tools on Python 
are not super great. You know, like libraries like Jedi or Jedi, I don't know how you say that, or Rope. They they're not really great when it comes to these dynamic imports uh, from strings. So I will prefer to just unroll the loop and do the stupid thing. Just keep the import and yeah, and 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 go that way. So I can have autocomplete and all that stuff. Uh, but you can absolutely do it with import leave and using import modules, I think is the, the function. Uh, but I'm going to do the, the normal import ex explicitly here because it works better with static analysis. Uh, say that, yes. Th there's another thing I would like to say is that there are open source projects that do this kind of thing and they do it better but this is such a small project that I don't want to add those dependencies. So that's another thing to take into account and why we're doing stuff this way. So uh, anyway, so let me uh, import, I would like to import a PyQt5 as Qt. And this will make sense in a second. So if I do this, this and that, so this is by side two, this is by QT4, and this is by side. Cool. Okay. So I will say QT is equal to none. I will start like that. And now I will try, yeah, I will try to record the macro. Yes. So I will say if QT is none. Uh, try uh, maybe do that and here maybe uh, accept if, if that import fail uh, accept uh, import error I would just pass and that's pretty much it so let me try to repeat that cool cool so now at this point, if Qt is Qt is non, we can raise an exception, saying something like Qt binding not found or something like that. Cool. So there's a bunch of uh, cool. Looks good. So let's try this now. Uh, let me import sys and let's do like a, a little window just to try stuff. So let's say app is equal to qt widget dot q application and you can see my nice autocomplete working. And then uh, we can create a window so q the oops widgets dot uh, q main window maybe why not then we can create a label and this is qt widgets dot q label qt widgets dot q label and the text will be something like hello oh, hello uh, bindings so maybe this qt dot name and then we can say window dot set central widget and we pass the label and at the end we uh no not yet then we can say window dot show so that show the window and at the end we close the, the application loop saying sys dot exit application dot Exact. Cool. So if I run this, I have in this computer PySide and PySide2 installed. So if I run this with PySide, which is Qt4, uh, here it is. So it say hello PySide. And this is a Qt4 application. It's using Qt4 libraries. So that's cool. If I run this with uh, PySide 2, which is 
Qt5, you can see it looks exactly the same, but it's using PySide too. So yeah, we have this working and now in the next video we can start actually doing some work on the UI for this little library. So yep, yeah, I hope you like it and see you in the next one. Bye bye.